Welcome to part 7 of my Technical Analysis Foundation course, Volume and Open Interest. This lesson is brought to you guys by Femex. I'll talk more about them later in this video. This week's lesson isn't going to be too content heavy. In preparation for next week where there's going to be a lot of work for you guys to do in constructing your frameworks. So content for this lesson. What is volume and open interest? I'm going to go over the definitions. I'm going to explain the difference between the two. Then we're going to talk about how to use them in our trading and also how to use them to identify liquidity. So I'm going to go over the usual disclaimers. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Any information spoken or written should not be interpreted as financial advice. Carry out your own independent verification of facts and data. Don't just take my word for anything. I am not a financial advisor. I do not hold any relevant qualifications. If you seek financial advice, speak to a professional. And finally, trading is an extremely risky activity. Your trades are your responsibility, so trade at your own risk. What is volume and open interest? So volume is just the total number of an entity traded during a given period of time. Open interest represents the total number of outstanding longs or shorts in the market, total number of contracts which are open at any time. So what is the difference between these two? To newer traders, this might sound very similar. Volume, you should think of as something which shows total trading activity, how many trades have happened during a given period of time. Open interest shows whether money is actually flowing in or out of the market. I feel it's best represented in an example. Person A creates a contract to sell to person B. Person B then decides to buy this contract. Every contract must have a buyer and a seller. Person A has made a new contract. So in this instance, one new contract is made, both open interest and volume increase by one. So following on from the first example, let's introduce a new person, person C. Person B has made money on his contract. He's happy with what's happened and he no longer wants to hold his position. So person B sells the contract, which he's bought from person A to person C. Now the contract, which A created, goes from person B to person C. In this instance, no new contract is made. Although volume increases by one because a trade has been made here, there is no increase in open interest that remains the same because B needs to leave the market for C to enter. And this is a crucial difference between volume and open interest. For those of you who are using Femex, if I just move this over here, yeah, you can see that it has under contract details, you can see 24 hour volume for the BTC USD pair and open interest. Whatever pair you're trading, you'll be able to see the volume and open interest as well. Uh, if the asset you're trading is not a contract and you're actually trading the asset itself, it won't have open interest, but you'll always get 24 hour volume as well. Now we're going to look at what happens to open interest and volume in every possible transaction that can happen. First, volume is very easy. Every time a transaction happens, it increases. Open interest is where people often get confused. Our first row, we see an instance where a buyer buys a new long and a seller sells a new short. This is the same as our first instance where a new contract has been created and both participants are new to the market. Open interest, as we saw in our first example, increases alongside volume. In our second example here, a buyer is buying a new long from a seller who's selling an old short. This is similar to our second example. And in this instance, open interest stays the same. Although a transaction has happened, one participant has left the market and one participant has entered the market. The next example is exactly the same. Only the seller is selling a new short and the buyer is buying an old short. Open interest stays the same. In this last example, a buyer is buying an old short and a seller is selling an old long. These two cancel each other out and both participants leave the market and therefore open interest decreases. So now we know what open interest and volume is, let's look at how this can aid us in trend analysis. Like before, this chart will show you every possible combination we can have. In our first row, we can see an example where we are in an uptrend and both volume and open interest are increasing together. This means that the total trade activity is increasing and the number of participants in the market are increasing as well. We're seeing an increase in demand, an increase in interest in whatever asset is being traded. 
So open interest and volume agree with our analysis that we are in an uptrend. So the implication is that we are in a strong uptrend. So in our second row, we have the opposite case where although we are in an uptrend, volume seems to still be decreasing and open interest is also decreasing. So trading activity isn't increasing despite the increase in price and new participants are not entering the market. This means that open interest disagrees with our analysis that we are in an uptrend. So the implication is that we have a weak trend. We expect either the price is going to reverse soon or it's not going to move very far. Similarly, if we are in a downtrend and both volume and open interest are increasing, then the number of market participants are also increasing. Trading activity is confirming that we are in a downtrend. So this is a strong downtrend. And I'm sure a lot of you will have guessed in the last example, we are in a downtrend. Volume and open interest are both decreasing. Participants are leaving the market. This does not strongly confirm the downtrend. So we have a weak downtrend. We expect it to reverse quickly or not last a very long amount of time. Finally, I'm going to go over how to use volume and open interest to identify liquidity. Volume and open interest are useful tools for ensuring the market has enough liquidity to support our orders. It becomes very difficult to navigate the market when there's no one to take the other side of your trades, especially when you start trading with larger position sizes. This can be very useful when selecting from multiple similar behaving assets. For example, in crypto, we have the altcoin market where there are a lot of similarly behaving assets. One of the best ways to choose which one to trade is to look for the high volume pairs. The ones that have a lot of volume are easier to navigate and get large position sizes filled on. So before I set the homework for this week's lesson, if you've made it this far into my technical analysis foundation course, I'm sure it's added some value to you as a trader. Now I'd love to make a lot more courses going into more detail on advanced concepts and giving you everything you need to be a complete well-rounded trader. But these take an immense amount of time and energy to make. The only reason I've been able to make this is thanks to my sponsors, Femex. Now, Femex aren't just my sponsors, they're actually the exchange I myself like to trade on. So if you use my link to try them out, you're going to increase the probability of me bringing you more courses like this in the future. And that is everything for this week's lesson. It's not too intense because next week is going to be the most intense lesson of the course so far. There's going to be a lot of work for everyone to do. Take some notes on what you've learned if you like anything. Revise the previous week's material as well. I want you guys to be very familiar with all the tools we've gone over by the time we get to next week's lesson so you can follow along with the lesson and start creating your own technical analysis framework.